My name's Dave Murphy. I'm a air combat officer on the F-18F Super Hornet. My name's Rick People. I'm a pilot on the Super Hornet here at uh, RAF Base Amberley. Uh, with the Super Hornet, it's one of the most advanced multi-role fighters that we have pretty much anywhere in the world. Uh, the technologies and the sensors that are in that aeroplane mean that we can simultaneously target both air and ground targets at the same time. With one person in the, in the cockpit, that gets very difficult. So having a dedicated guy in the back seat means that we can exploit the aircraft's full capabilities. Uh, and that's pretty much what Dave does. In general terms, it's my job to use all the sensors that are on the aircraft to make tactical decisions to ensure the success of our mission. The old term in the F-111, I guess, was navigator, and it's, it's definitely not a navigator role anymore. It's, it's a lot more uh, involved than that, it's, which I guess is why we're now called air combat officers. Bottom line, this jet is the most advanced combat aircraft in the region, and uh, the capabilities of the jet surpass the capabilities of one person. So therefore, having two people in the jet allows us to achieve the capability, like realise the full potential of the jet. One, one crew member maxes out, that's the most that they can achieve, whereas if you've got two crew members there, then the front seater can be targeting an enemy aircraft, and myself, as the ACO in the back seat, I can be, I can be finding the target on the ground that we were meant to be hitting and, and locate that and uh, release and guide weapons onto that, onto that target. Because both cockpits can essentially run uh, the entire jet, apart from Murph not being able to fly from the back seat, we can uh, share the, the roles. Uh, we can hand off roles if, if one of us is, is maxing out. Having an ACO in the back seat means that we can move tasks around and, and move them forward and back in, in the cockpit so that while the pilot is dealing with an air threat or some other th surface threat, the ACO on the back can be dealing with prosecuting uh, surface targets, talking to the army guys on the ground uh, and essentially achieving uh, two different roles at the one time. However, we have specialised roles in the cockpit that clearly I am flying the aeroplane, but when it comes to weapon delivery in that uh, area, that is specialised in the back seat. Although I'm capable of doing it in the front and I can take those sensors and use it, that is Murph's specialty and that's, that's where uh, employing the sensors and employing the jet tactically is, is I guess, where the ACO uh, is employed. The way the, the sensors are set up in the back seat, it just enables me to have kind of a bigger picture situational awareness of what's going on in the battle space. So that's probably why the ACO is uh, is better positioned as more of a mission commander role. The reason I do that is because I have all that information from all the sensors on the aircraft and information fed into me from external sources as well, not just my own aircraft. All that information fused together and can use that information to make the tactical decisions for the mission. Good fast jet air crew in general, whether that be pilot or ACO, requires uh, flexibility and coolness under pressure because the tactical situation that you're faced with is so dynamic and changes so rapidly that you might have this perfect plan in your mind, you're going to do this, this, then this, and suddenly something happens and that plan has to go out the window and you, uh, in very quick time, have to come up with plan B, C, D or whatever. So I would say one of the biggest keys is uh, that coolness under pressure and flexibility and adaptability. Our, our job, although it is fun to fly around in fast jets, is, is more than that and it's probably not something that we think about as being a fun thing. Uh, it is certainly more effective having two people in the cockpit.